think it's time to get my dad's old cloak out again. We may love the Harry Potter movies. Agreed. Agreed. But even they committed some cardinal sins, namely cutting some of the most important and beloved characters. Whether you are House Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, or Hufflepuff, one thing we can all agree on is that Harry Potter is awesome. Oh yeah. While the movies have their detractors, for the most part they are faithful adaptations of the book series we all know and love. From the glorious moments that made the hairs on our necks stand on end, to the hilarious gags that made pumpkin juice and butterbeer snort out of our noses, to the deaths of our favorite characters who left us comatose as if we had just looked into the eyes of a basilisk. But even the movies made some pretty big boo-boos, not only cutting some of the best scenes like the Quidditch World Cup, but also cutting some of the most important and interesting characters. Right. In this video, we will take a look at 10 different characters from the Harry Potter books that didn't make it into the movie. Thanks. From members of our favorite wizarding family, to entire families, to comedy gold characters who never got to see the light of day, get ready to step back into the wizarding world as we take a look at the most important Harry Potter characters to be cut from the movies. Oh. One of the biggest peeves Harry Potter fans have with the movie series is that they left out the fun-loving prankster poltergeist. Peeves. While we did see a lot of spirits make their way into the movies, such as John Cleese's nearly headless Nick, there were some notable omissions. Chief among them was Peeves. Peeves, who was reminiscent of a court jester, would often cause havoc on the Hogwarts students and teachers with his pranks and mischievous personality and would often cause unrequited mayhem. This made him a favorite among fans, but one major thing that fans loved about him is his constant trolling of one of the most hated and irritating characters, Dolores Umbridge. Peeves was apparently supposed to make an appearance in the movies, with British comedic actor Rick Mayall cast to play the character in The Sorcerer's or Philosopher's Stone, but his scene was ultimately cut, much to the dismay of the fans. No offense, but I really don't care. Other than the Potter family, one of the most notable families in the Wizarding books is the Weasley family. The Weasleys are synonymous with red hair and numerous brothers, but there was one brother that was left out of the film series, Charlie Weasley. Charlie was the second eldest son of Molly and Arthur Weasley and was primarily known for his love and work with dragons in Romania. In fact, he has hands-on time with the mythical beasts in Goblet of Fire, but this was, again, left out. Charlie is actually a consistent figure in the books and is present at the Battle of Hogwarts and the defeat of Voldemort. But sadly, his only appearance in the movies was very brief, with him appearing in the back of the Weasley family photo taken during their vacation to Egypt in between the events of Chamber of Secrets and Prisoner of Azkaban. Other than that, he is only referred to in dialogue. But he did get his own spin-off movie, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> Just kidding. But imagine if that was true. As we mentioned, one of the biggest disappointments of the Goblet of Fire movie was the fact that the Quidditch World Cup was drastically reduced with the game itself being cut. This was mainly to save costs and time with the movie already having a bloated runtime of over two and a half hours. Have been cancelled! Head of the Department of Magical Games and former beater of the England national Quidditch team also hit the cutting room floor. Ludo was an eccentric figure, one who played dirty and took risks, causing him to end up in some considerable debt to goblins and to make a shifty deal deal with the Weasley twins. Ludo was one of the main organizers of the Quidditch World Cup and the Triwizard Tournament, but unfortunately his part was cut with the roles going to Dumbledore and Barty Crouch Sr. respectively. It is a shame though as his presence would have provided comic relief in an emotionally taxing movie, e.g. when Dumbledore asks not quite so calmly if Harry put his name in the Goblet of Fire. Just because characters are Death Eaters doesn't mean they can't redeem themselves. One such character is Regulus Black, the brother of our favorite godfather Sirius. When Voldemort mistreats his house elf creature, he realizes that Voldemort isn't what he's cracked up to be and turns his back on the Dark Lord, sacrificing himself to destroy a horcrux. But of course, we don't see this in the movies. But this could have added more depth to House Black as well as giving Creature a more complicated and emotional backstory. 
We did get to see a number of mythical beasts, such as hippogriffs, dragons, and werewolves, but there was one omission that really bugged me for some reason, and that is the fact that the Blast Ended Scroots did not show up in the movies. Blast Ended Scroots are a crossbreed of manticores and fire crabs and are strange, odd looking, but formidable creatures that cause a mixture of trepidation and comic relief within the books and are one of the obstacles in the maze in the Goblet of Fire. But like many things Goblet of Fire, they were cut out because they weren't important to the plot and they didn't fit in with the time and money view the studio had in relation to the movie. Still though, Blast ended Scrooge. While Dobby may be our favorite house elf whose death left us emotional wrecks, he wasn't the only house elf to make a major appearance. Winky was the house elf for the Crouch family and was even the one initially blamed for firing off the dark mark at the Quidditch World Cup before being unceremoniously released by the Crouches which left her distraught. She ended up working at Hogwarts, which she also wasn't happy about, but she eventually comes around and participates in the final battle at Hogwarts. Although she isn't mentioned once in the movies and is another one to be unfortunately left out. The only time we see her is a very, very blink and you'll miss it cameo in Goblet of Fire. But other than that, Winky was left in the vast ether of characters to be cut, but true fans will always remember her. It isn't just Voldemort's backstory we don't see a lot of, but we also don't see a great deal of our favorite mentor type, Albus Dumbledore's history. Chiefly, the main omission from his backstory is his sister Ariana, the younger sister of Albus and Aberforth, who is left traumatized after being attacked by muggle boys and unable to control her magical powers. Albus becomes Adriana's guardian after his father is sent to Azkaban after seeking revenge on the muggles who attacked Ariana and after she accidentally killed their mother in an explosion. Ariana accidentally dies herself after being struck by a curse during a three-day duel between her older brothers and the dark wizard Grindelwald. This led to Albus becoming a teacher and eventually the head of one of the most respected schools of all time, Hogwarts. Ariana has such a huge impact on Albus and it is surprising that the only way we see her in the movies is via a painting and not by flashback. In the movie, Bellatrix is what you would call the ultimate fangirl when it comes to her dark lord and savior, Voldemort. It is their strange relationship in the movies that would have you forgiven for thinking that there was something romantic between the two of them. But in the books, Bellatrix actually has a husband, Rodolphus Lestrange, hence why she is no longer Bellatrix Black. Yeah, I know, she doesn't really seem the marriage type, more the kill your family and make you watch type. Well, that's probably because Rodolphus and Bellatrix aren't exactly what you would call a conventional couple. With Rod Adolphus joining Bellatrix in torturing the Longbottoms. As couples' hobbies go, that's probably the worst one. Rodolphus didn't make it into the movies, though, with Bellatrix's main man seeming to be Voldemort. She really knows how to pick him. Lord Voldemort, I'm sorry, he who shall not be named, certainly made his presence known throughout the series. But one thing that was left out was his heritage, in particular, the family on his mother's side, the Gaunts. The Gaunts are direct descendants of Salazar Slytherin, which you might know Voldemort is pretty darn proud of. Ted's legacy is ensured when Tonks and Lupin name their child after his grandfather. But when they die in battle, Andromeda is left to raise young Ted with the help of Godfather. Harry. But as you guessed, they weren't a particularly friendly bunch with Voldemort's mother, Merop, being a victim of abuse from her father Marvolo and her brother Morfin. In order to escape her miserable home life, she tricks Voldemort's father, Tom Riddle Sr., into a relationship by giving him a love potion with the pair running off together and giving birth to the Dark Lord. Unfortunately, we don't see any reference to the Gaunts in the movies, with little of Voldemort's heritage being shared. As we previously said, Peeves wasn't the only ghost to not be making an appearance in the movies with another being the boring and monotonous history of magic teacher, Professor Binns. Professor Binns was a teacher at Hogwarts, teaching into old age until he fell asleep in the staff room and passed away in his slumber. However, death did not stop Binns from teaching as he continued his classes in spirit form. Binns' classes were known as the most tedious among Hogwarts, with Binns continually droning on about goblin rebellions and giant wars. Which to me actually sounds pretty cool, but when your classes involve flying around on broomsticks, turning yourself into animals, and dueling each other, Bin's class seemed a little dry to the Hogwarts students. What's surprising about his omission, though, is that he provided critical exposition in regards to the Chamber of Secrets, but that wasn't enough to save him from being cut. Hello? What do you make of the cuts?
Which character were you most disappointed not to see? Any we missed? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to The Binger for more of this and everything else Harry Potter.